So we have seen how to represent one variable, okay, with the histogram. We have seen how to represent a variable and a category or two categories with the cat plot, box plot, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, a lot of time we want to show the relationship between two numerical variables. Um, so for that, okay, I just here reset the default theme because we had changed it before. We have the scatter plot, okay, quite classical one, you just show dots of points. And so for this, you give your X and your Y. It's always kind of the same syntax. You give your data, your X, your Y, and you get shown whatever you have there, all right? And then you have the same hue argument. You can also change the color, change the palette as we have done before. Okay, so there's not much new. Now, one thing that we may want to do, for example, is to say, okay, this fair, you see that there is a great concentration there at the beginning and a few points which are high. So maybe we want to log transform the data. And for that, it's not too hard. So I can just do the same thing as before, grab whatever was created by the scatter plot in an axe, and then axe.set x scale equal log sets the x to a log scale. All right. Then, um, you know, we have some very small numbers and with logs, sometimes small numbers can skew things up a bit, especially since I think we have a couple of zeros there. And so I manually set the limit of the axis. So set x lim to from between three and 1000 and to kind of show this. And that's what we get there. So that we see now, okay, I have my scatter plot and now I'm beginning to tune it a little. And now, of course, maybe you want to represent your categories. So what you can do is you can have one category, the, the passenger class, you as color. So that's the hue argument. And here I set up a custom palette, tomato teal mustard here for have my three colors. And then style is a little bit like hue, but it doesn't act on colors. It acts on the style of the points. And so you have here the sex being represented as round and crosses, okay, for male and female there. So we have now one level also of information that we give there. So that's one way of doing that. Uh, I think it's quite useful. Personally, though, I, I don't really like symbols too much. I find them not so always so informative. So I will just show you one other way that I do things. And it's by just using more colors. And I use what we called um, paired color palettes. No, oh, sorry about this. Paired color palettes. Okay, so there what I do is that I concatenate the class and sex, okay, together. I create it like one column, if you will, with all six uh, possible combinations between all there. I use that in my hue. I give here the argument hue order, which will sort them, which will like let me define precisely in what order I want these categories to come by, because I would like them here by sorting them. I make sure that they appear in a sense in an order that kind of makes sense, right? And I don't mix like the sex and the classes and so on and so forth. And then I use the paired uh, palette. So again, as I, I've given you a little link there to see all the palettes that exist. And this one have like several hues. And each time you have like a solid and uh, a dark and a light hue, and they come in pairs, which works fairly well for me because each time I have pair, male, female, male, female, male, female, right? And that gives me this, which is another, let's say, flavor for the plot that we have just done above. Right. All good so far? Yes. All right. So then, as you can see, now we have kind of the main recipe. Uh, it's just that now we have another kind of plot. Okay. It's the scatter plot. But then the way that we enter in this plot and that we play around with this plot is always kind of the same. We have hue and we have plenty of little arguments that we play around with and we tweak and uh, we change stuff until we have something visually pleasing for us. Now there are two other uh, kind of plots that I want to show you because sometimes, you know, this is nice, but sometimes you don't want to show just points. So the first is the KDE plot. So we've done that already. 
for just a single line. But if you give both an X and a Y to the KDE plot, it will do a 2D dimensional, uh, like a 2D um, density plots. So yeah, you can see here density of three categories of the of of three iris species. This is with the iris data set there, depending on sepal width and sepal length. And it's just the function that we have used before. Okay, with just the X and Y. And here this little threshold there plays with the number, basically the, the difference that you are expecting between the number, the lines there. So if you tweak this threshold argument, you will get either less or more lines. Okay, so that's one of the little style. And then also sometimes you have, of course, data which are organized in time or organized, you know, such that you want to draw lines through them. And for that, of course, it's line plot. Okay. It's actually, you know, you want to show a scatter plot, then it's function scatter plot. You want to show lines that it's line plot. And then the way that it works is also fairly similar to what we've seen before. You specify what is the X, what is the Y, and eventually what is the hue. Uh, so what should be the color and what should be the style. So there now, it's not around and cross, but it's just solid line or dash line or dot line or something like this. And the way that line plot is worked, uh, it creates little error bars around uh, the line, which is by default a confidence in a ninety five percent confidence interval. But there are plenty of arguments to make it standard deviation, something custom, no lines, or show everything and so on and so forth. Right? There is quite a few number of options there for you. All right. So that's just also to show you a small example of what we do with this simple one function call there. Okay. And that was about what I wanted to show to you. This one, I will launch it right now. It takes a bit of time, but for data exploration, it's quite of nice to do sometimes what we call a pair plot. And that will just create a visualization. Let's hope it doesn't take too long because it has to sh show to you plenty, plenty of data there. Um, so that will just show a number of uh, a number of variable and their relationship to one another. Does it want to plot? Oh, looks like it doesn't want to plot. So I will sort that out later on. But I don't want to dawdle too much. And so. Last thing that I want to show to you is how to write these plots to the disk. It's actually super simple, right? So you create your plots, and at some point you're like, ah, I'm super happy. I want to share that to a colleague, right? One way of doing that is to just, you can actually click and drag or just right click and save this image as something, right? But sometimes with code, it's a bit nicer. You can just create your plot, okay? It's with sns.catplot then. You catch it as a variable, and then you just call this dot save fig, and then whatever you give there, it will be saved to. If you output something dot png, it will be a png format. If you have something dot pdf, it will be a pdf format. It's really as simple as that. It's actually relatively smart. And of course, if you want to have fine control over your DPI, number of pixel, why um, height, width, and so on and so forth, you can see that they are some of these arguments there to the save fig function. It's actually super, super simple to save figures. There we go. So I think this is one that one. And now that should work. It does. Oof. Okay, sorry about that one. And then you see that I've created this output.png file there. And if I do that one now, it should work as well. Of course, it takes a bit of time to compute everything. And now you can see that I have also this file that has been created there. All right. So, all right, there you go. And that takes us to uh, the entire material. So sorry, I went a little bit over the hour there, but I was, I hope that it was worth it for you. Sorry, I there was this little mess up with the diffraction data frame. So there you are. Um, so this is, we have shown you plenty of ways to do uh, data analysis in Python, to get your table in, modify it, play around with it, and then show you a few tricks to start plotting. Of course, we have only scratched the surface there. 
there is much more to go on. I have we have left plenty of links throughout the notebooks for so that you can go and see more materials. I've shown you also the example galleries and so on and so forth. So don't hesitate to go there to play around with that to experiment, and you should 